Good day, traders. Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Today, we're talking about the three-day cycle and how I look for my best trade setups. The last few videos, we've gone a bit more in depth and looked at some different uh, trade setups over the course of the day, from the high and the low of the day, the coils. Um, but looking at the end of day, and the same principles apply on any instrument, on any currency, and Things boil down to some really basic concepts for me. For the initial balance, Monday, Tuesday, typically on a normal week, will form the initial high and low for the week as the week begins. This forms a box to me. So the box now gives me our asymmetrical targeting for risk-reward setups. Now that can be sometimes in a trending market for a measured move, a high-low break of that box, or it may just be in a trading range um, or we could be in a reversal or a strongly trending market. So again, depending on where the week opens, it may involve other time frame traders, meaning that Monday may trigger a previous day's higher low, previous Friday, previous uh, weekly or monthly high and low, depending on the timing of the month. So the importance to understand with that uh, rationale is that uh, each week will be different because of where we're at in that weekly or, or monthly cycle. But when Monday and Tuesday open up, if they trigger a previous week's high or low, which then obviously will all involve other time frame traders. So we may have the break of a previous day's high or low, but that could be the weekly high and low. And we also may be at the end or beginning of a month, which will involve other time frame traders, institutions, hedge funds, etc. So, which is why every week can be different, and we may already be in an existing breakout or trending market or a trading range where we're just going sideways uh, for a previous week. We may be inside of a previous week's range when Monday and Tuesday trade, which we'll look at some examples of this week. A narrow range day, which you've heard me refer to as a day zero setup, can precede a large explosive move. We're going to look at a couple of those and some of the existing uh, trading that's happened this week as a result of that. Some day two trade setups. Uh, and, and I'm targeting the trade setup. So just to come back to, I'm looking for the explosive trade setups that offer me the best risk reward that have the potential to move strongly in one direction with the path of least resistance. So I think there's still some confusion for some people in, in terms of in understanding the, the type of trade I'm looking for. Calling being in the right direction is, is part of that. So there are trades that can, you can get into an existing move and, and be right and get, you know, your 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 100 pips. But the question for myself is the type of trend or the movement of that trend, is it the type that I would want to put size on? And obviously, if it's moving in the right direction, uh, that's 50% of the battle, but it's how much it pulls back each time in terms of how you will manage that trade. If you go to break even with size because it's you know you, you just can't handle the stress or you want to go to break even, but it pulls back constantly tapping you out before it resumes that original move. I'm looking for the explosive big coiled trade setups. <clears throat> so understanding that there are trades that I'll take that are creeping trends that are just going to move maybe 25 to 50 pips over the course of a couple of hours. But then there are also opportunities for 50 or more or 100 or more if it's gold, maybe 200, where the market may explode and move very strongly in 15 minutes as much as 100 pips. So just to uh, talk about news, a couple questions about news. News can act as a catalyst for the completion or the beginning of a new move. So I don't get in front of any major news. Uh, you know, just as some examples, uh, I've left off BOE, but interest rates, non-farm payrolls, the Fed, those are, you know, big movers. And, and often... If you're in an existing trade heading into the news, that may be the capitulation or the completion of that trade target. So you're in a trade, it's moving strongly, the news comes along and boom, it blows off and hits your target. Um, obviously at that point you'd want to be ca capturing something or moving to break even and having your stop loss a distance away from your initial entry as sometimes these 
uh, major news will gap as much as 50 or more pips uh, as your best fill if you are wrong. So if you have a stop loss in place, it could be 20 pips. Uh, the, the market may gap as much as 50 pips or more on major news on some of these uh, major news items. So I do not trade in front of the news ever. Uh, I will trade right after the news. If I am in the news, I'll, I usually, again, I'm already up an amount and I'll be trapping a certain amount and I'll be looking for the news to complete the move and that will be based on how the price action has set up. If it's not set up or it's struggling or whatever, I'll just be out of the market before their major news comes. The other scenario is that they will use major news to stop hunt. So they'll flush sometimes both sides of the market, especially on the Fed. Often we'll see that on a level three where they'll hit the high and the low before going into consolidation. They stop out traders on both sides. Sometimes we see that on payrolls as well. But again, it depends on uh, where we're at in the week, the, the overall structure of the bigger picture, the bigger trend scenario. So if we take a look at some of the major pairs, just, just as an example this week, I have nothing on the chart other than the blue line, which represents the previous day's high and low. Lots of people have asked about this indicator. Unfortunately, I do not have this available as a standalone indicator. It's part of a package and I do not have access to any of this uh, coding or anything. So my apologies, but you know, uh, the simplest thing to do is, is just draw your lines. But if we look at the Canadian dollar, and we're going to talk about this for a second, I'm going to mark off the previous week's high and low. So as the week opens, which is represented by our pink line, you'll notice a couple of things. Monday opens up inside of the previous week's high and low. But what we'll also notice about the previous week's high and low is that that week itself has given us a peak formation high and a peak for formation low, and we've gone into consolidation. So this is an example of a week opening up inside of a previous week's high and low, but we also have a nice day zero scenario on our weekly high and low. But we'll talk about a bit more about that in a minute as we look at uh, the daily chart as well. Point we're talking about today is the Monday Tuesday forms a typically on a normal week will form the high and the low. And what I mean by that is that that gives me my upper and lower boundaries. That is not necessarily going to stay the extreme high or low, but that gives us or gives me my reference point heading into the week or towards the end of the week where I can look for ideal setups for possibly high of the week, low of the week trades or trending trades that will potentially give me maybe a measured move out of a break of a high low range scenario. Now, just stepping back and not trading this, and we'll talk about this in a second, just establishing that on Monday we put a high of the day and a high of the week in place. And obviously you can see the three peaks if you were to short this market. We're not going to talk about timings or anything right now. We're just talking about big picture setups. The market obviously sold off in the U.S. session, taking out the previous day's low, the Friday's low, but also the low of the week. Tuesday then came down and gave us a one push, two push, three push pattern before pulling back to form our low of the week setup. Now, <clears throat> you'll notice again the peak formations are on the bottom, so I get a lot of questions are what are peak formations? Well, peak formations are the peaks at the high of the day or the low of the day, high of the week, low of the week. So we are looking, when I'm trading, if I'm trading, I've talked about looking to sell at the high or buy at the low. Well, obviously you can identify peak formations for selling or buying, but more importantly now we have a high low of the week, but we've also triggered other time frame traders into the market by breaking the weekly low. You've heard me say this in the past, nobody gets a free lunch. So if traders have traded the break of that weekly low, you know, they're on longer time frame charts, uh, they're trading breakouts, uh, trend following systems, whatever that may be, the market pulls back inside. Now, if we project our high of Monday across and gives us our high of the week, reference point. So again, we're not going to talk about numbers or anything, just the basic concepts of a high-low opportunity. Now what I would be looking for is a market that gives me something to sell high or buy low or potentially gives me a day zero situation possibly inside for a trending move coming out of this box. 
Now, we see that Monday, Tuesday formed our high low. Wednesday was a creeping trend back up. Now, we haven't talked a lot about creeping trends. Creeping trends will resolve themselves in one of two ways. They will blow off in the direction of the creep or they will reverse. Now, again, we, you've heard me talk about all these higher lows. When you see a creeping trend, our potential fuel for a move if it was to come back in the opposite direction. Now, what we see is an example of the market on Thursday, auctioning down before pulling back, hitting the previous day's high, as evidenced by the blue dotted line, but also the high of the week. Now, for those people who ask what engulfments and pin hammers are, I've said print off your charts, mark off the highs and lows. You'll notice engulfments establishing a high. Now, we're, we're not going to go too in-depth into just high-low of the day, but same, uh, the same principles apply. The market made a high, went down and made a low, then it continued to extend the low before pulling back. We then had a high and a low. Now, that offers traders an opportunity for a measured move if that market trades back in the opposite direction. We had one full expansion as a potential profit target off the high of the day at the timing window, which again, we're not going to talk about today. I just want the basic concepts to be understood about high and low of the week opportunities. Now, we're going to look at the daily chart on this in a second, and nothing I talk about here is a... Uh, a recommendation for a trade setup. We're talking about concepts, but we are going to talk about the Canadian dollar. I'm going to blow up today and we're going to talk about this. We have the market going into consolidation into the close at the previous day's low. We are inside of the low of the week. You'll notice a triple bottom reversal. They've made a small W and they've locked inside of the previous week's low. So we are back inside of the previous week's low after taking out the low of the week, which is also, by the way, the low of the month. And I believe, and we'll check this in a second, the low of the year. We have a smaller rectangle on the bottom as this market's gone into consolidation. Now coming back to some basic concepts. The market initially went up and made a high, came back down and has made a low, and then gone higher. So at this stage, we are making new highs. The market has broken out, and we are now in a bit of a pullback, but we have a low of the day, and we have a high of the day. Now, we are also inside, as I mentioned, we're inside of the, the low of the week. We're just going to scrunch this back up, which we established on Tuesday. Monday, Tuesday made our high low, the creeping trend back up to the high of the week. They sold it off, stop hunted down into the creep. Now we've got a small rectangle. They've broken out and the market is pulling back inside. Now, if we go to our daily chart, and I'm just going to blow this up. Okay, the month began, we had we were already in one push down, two pushes down, but for the month we have one push down, two pushes down, and a third push down, and if we blow this up, you'll notice that anybody who is selling this follow through bear candle is selling at the low of the year. Now, I don't know what this market's gonna do, but I know that now we have possibly somebody who sold this uh, bear candle and their stop most likely is going to be at the high of the week, at the high of the day. And we've already triggered the low of the month. We've hit stops and had a, a pin reversal. And again, I'm not making any trade recommendations. I'm just watching how price behaves. Possibly this market now may give us some kind of rectangular coiled consolidation for a retest of the high of the day. Now this is a good example of asymmetrical risk reward opportunity if we were to see the same, this sort of same setup but flipped over and mirror reversal on the other side. We may not see this go all the way down to the low of the day. We could see a market auction down and give us a, a bullpen engulfment reversal. But again, these are the sort of scenarios that I'm looking for. We're combining multiple time frame traders. We've got weekly traders uh, involved in the market that are short, that are underwater. Currently, we've got end of day traders um, triggered long. The stops have been hit. We've got end of day traders possibly short 
on this market. And we have traders that are already in the existing short positions in this market. And we have a market that's gone into consolidation at the low of the previous day on top of the low of the previous week. So these are the scenarios that I'm looking for with asymmetrical risk reward. If we look at the Aussie dollar, uh, sorry, this is gold. Uh, another example, again, we're in a, a strongly moving market, but just talking about Monday, Tuesday, identifying our high and low of our initial balance. And <clears throat> Tuesday formed our upper boundary. We had volume trapped up high on Tuesday. Uh, again, low of the day scenario, but we had all this volume trapped up in the upper part of our box. So again, when we see volume up high in our initial balance, possibly we are going to see a stop hunt against that volume. That high-low scenario, this is going to be possibly a very interesting day as we have a day zero effect on Wednesday. Peak formation, high peak formation, low and inside bar yesterday. Stop hunt down in Asia this morning. And again, I'm going to just highlight some things for people. Nothing else but timings and numbers here. But I also want to point out engulfment at the low of the day. If you're not sure what these are, start printing them off. I get e I get four or five emails a day asking me what, a, what an engulfment is, what a pin hammer is, how do I know I'm at the low or the high of the day. These are the situations that I'm looking for. That's an engulfment at the low of the day on a second leg micro W. Now again, let's just go back to our basic <clears throat> situation here is that we're in a strongly moving upward market. We're up high for the week, but there's a possibility that this market, if it comes out of this coil after our day zero effect, that we could be in a measured move. Now, again, this is not a trade recommendation. This is how I look at the market. Uh, we've had stop hunt down. Uh, we've now established at this stage of the trading day a uh, low of the day. Uh, we have a high of the day, obviously, from the beginning of the session. We have a high of the, the session from last night. Um, so it's possible we may have another move back into that engulfment to retest that breakout, possibly forming a game. We're, we're working into the lows the last couple days. Peak formation high, peak formation low, consolidation again. So again, you'll notice that similar day zero situation. Uh, high and low peak formations and then the coiled consolidation inside and we're double inside bar at this stage so this potentially whatever direction this market moves could be very large uh, but again at this we talked about this high low the market stop hunted back into the box before breaking through the highest and, and again extending our high out further so the day three Monday, Tuesday makes our high low. Day three extends the high out. At this stage, Monday is the low, Wednesday is the high, and we're inside. Aussie dollar, uh, again, just coming back, this is a great example of a market opening up inside of the previous week's high and low. So I'll just pen those in. Actually, the previous week's high was up top. So again, Monday, Tuesday opens up inside of the previous week. So again, having some clear just th thinking process about being inside versus on the outside. When you're inside, this I would wait. I would be waiting for a high and a low to establish itself or a level to be broken. So on Monday, we do not get a previous day's level broken. I want other time frame traders in the market. That's what gives a lot of the big moves, the juice. You'll notice that Thursday gave us a reverse head and shoulders type of formation. Uh, we talked about this in one of the previous videos. This is a very similar day zero scenario. It's at the low of the week, uh, a head and shoulders reversal. <clears throat> this may not fit the classic example of all this for some of the classic chartists out there, but in essence, this is a three push pattern reversal, day zero, peak formation low, peak formation high, consolidation, breaks out on Friday and trends. We're inside. Monday opens up. We have Friday's high, Monday's low. <clears throat> On Tuesday, we take out Monday's high and we take out Friday's high. There's the high and the low for my week. Now, I talk about looking for trades off the high and the low of the week. We had uh, Aussie unemployment yesterday. Uh, we'll just double check this. 
unemployment on the Aussie dollar. So that was in the morning, this pin structure right here. So you'll notice again the high and the low of our week. The stop hunt occurred into the traders that were outside of the breakout. So somebody sold the break of the week, break of the previous uh, Friday's low. <clears throat> Immediately the market stop hunts back in. And then the news pins down into traders that have gotten in prior to the news. So they've, they're in the right direction. They've bought it. <clears throat> and then the markets come back and hit their stops. So again, just talked about the creeping trend. So we had a creeping trend uh, back up hitting stop so again you could be long I'm talking about moves that are going to explode for my ideal trade setups and we'll talk about that on gold uh, we'll just go back and look at that so again if you had size in here you notice how there's pins it pulls back and it creeps up before putting in a top of the day and then pulling back today so <clears throat> if somebody's trading if I was trading the Aussie dollar right now Okay, I need something to either be a day zero situation or I need something that I would be looking for down here or up here for my trades. That's what I'm looking for. That to me offers the best risk reward setups, but I would want to see something coiled up ready to explode. So if we go back and look at gold, <clears throat> Okay, we talked about this in our last video, uh, one of the last two videos, high and low of the day. The market crept down into the low of the day, gave a bullpen hammer for an explosive move. The next day, high and low of the day. I know there's other traders that took these trades. Now, remember what I said. This time frame gives me my levels. <clears throat> I don't have to stick to this time frame. I can go down to the one minute and the five minute to look for the best entry. I might use a one hour high low. They're all the same, but I'm looking to get in when the market approaches these levels based on how price behaves. The same setups, this same setup will show up on a one minute or a five minute chart. I want to see the tail and the hammer. I may not get an engulfment, but it'll be there on the smaller time frame. Okay, so you may not see that on the 15 minute, but it gives me my high and my low. You'll notice they went up to the high, they came straight back down to the low. But traders who got in here, if they didn't take money off, they came right back and pinned into traders who were short. So again, I'm looking for the explosive move and I'm taking money off the table. Once it's at the high, if price, be, I'm on day three, I already know, or day two, I already know that that could be the high of the day. So there's no point in being greedy and again you're not missing out on trades this is another great example the market breaks down and takes through the previous day's low drops 200 pips before we get our engulfment for this this move was massive uh, but this is shows you again mark print douglas principles anything is possible anything can happen um you know one bar stop but i'm not blindly entering in i'm looking at my five minute my one minute for how price behaves but this go back and look what time these bars happened at they're at the same time every single day within 15 minutes of each other except for monday but it's the same principle the u.s 12 candle window there's a four hour high low there <clears throat> last night the same thing they put a low of the day in place one push two pushes they went up and made a high of the day okay do you get the concept that i am waiting for the high and the low whether it's for the week whether it's for the day because I know the market's going to give me a trade opportunity. Bullpen hammer. Okay, even if you're not at the screen in the session timing, look where the stop hunt comes back into. One minute and five minute gave you perfect entries here. The best fill was below double zeros, between 75 and double zeros. Anything between there was over 100 pips. The high was just below double zeros. It was 125 pip move back up. So uh, if we take a look at the euro. So we talked about the previous week's high and low. And we had the day zero situation uh, last Thursday. So we had the, again, the market gave us our peak formation high and our peak formation low on Thursday inside of the low of the, the Monday, uh, sorry, payrolls Friday. The market broke out and trended on the Friday. And I talked about the high of the week, low of the week trade setups. This was an ideal day two trade setup heading into Tuesday. So this same pattern, this same peak formation high, peak formation low consolidation, do you notice anything on Monday? 
Monday's bar will zoom out in a second here. Monday's bar, peak formation high, peak formation low. Okay, this this is how to make your trading really simple. Same setup, consolidation, a day two setup with the trend, targeting, going back to, we'll just put the high of the week back in here with the green line so we can see it. Targeting back to the high of the week. So the market creeps up, makes a high and a low, comes back and boom, breaks out. So we have three types of trades. We have breakout trades, trend trades, breakout pullback continuation, but we're in an existing strong move out of a day zero. And then we get another day zero on Monday, narrow range day for a second day trade, back through the high of the week. But also, let's just do the measured move, high and low of the day, two times that box. So it does uh, one and a half expansions, but again, this is where we talk about Monday, Tuesday. We go up and we draw Monday's high. This is a classic example of peak formation high on a Wednesday, taking out the high of the week before reversing. So again, just looking, looking at the engulfment and pin hammer at the high of the week. The low was formed, the high and the low were formed in the upper part of this box at the high of the week. They break out through the high at the timing window, engulf, stop hunt back down underneath all the volume that's caught up on Monday evening and Tuesday. Sorry, Tuesday evening and into the uh, Wednesday morning. So stop hunt down, pull back, stop hunt into traders that are short, and then boom, the explosive move back down into the breakout trade from Tuesday. So high and low of the day, Monday, Tuesday, three-day cycles. Uh, this happens every single week. And again, we've got to, we've got to, we'll just highlight this um, because it's Friday and we have Euro news on the calendar today. And again, I don't know where this is going to go, but we've got our German flash manufacturing. But do you notice the type of trend that we have today? It's a creeping trend with higher lows all the way up. Now this market is either going to explode through the high for a trend trade, or we're going to see maybe a stop hunt on both directions in the news, or we could see a stop hunt through these higher lows, or a move back down, a 50 pip box move back down. Again, just the style of trend heading into the peak formation we got a peak formation high at the high of the week, and we have major news coming this afternoon on a Friday. Uh, but just coming back to our original premise, we've taken out the high of last week. We've got one push, two push, three pushes into the peak, creeping trend back up to the peak. So we're either going to see this breakout and continue or trade back and forth, possibly for a stop hunt back down against the creep. Again, I would not be in front of the news, but I would be looking for something even if the news starts to move and takes out stops or breaks out, once that market settles or 15 minutes after that market is settled, <clears throat> 15 minute charts, it's possible we may get a low of the day or a high of the day set up for a trade in the opposite direction or a trend trade if it's a breakout pullback. So Monday, Tuesday, initial balance typically will give me my upper and lower boundaries. That goes the same thing throughout the day and you'll notice Yesterday, you know, we'll just take a creeping trend day. Okay, this is a messy day, but just to understand when the day starts, start everything from scratch, the market makes a high, then goes up higher. So now we have a low of the day, okay, and we have a new high of the day. But the market has broken higher to make new highs. It breaks out again and makes a new high before pulling back. And then it breaks out again before stop hunting back down into the breakout and we get our little inside bar engulfment of the inside bar for our continuation creep and the same thing applies they're making new highs stop hunt down breakout pullback continuation so every day the market starts its process again it makes a high it makes a low then it may extend the range in one direction it's working the high working the high working the high stop hunt down continues the move long. Price action confirms the direction that I'm looking for. If they were to break out pullback into the high, there's our bull pin, bear pin hammer right at the US equity hour first bar for a fast explosive move down. This is the first bar after New York equities opened. 
that went from 2230 all the way down to 2160 so that's 70 pip move but you'll notice once the market uh, moved down and sideways zero heat boom straight down through the low so hopefully you got value from today's video traders uh, I step back. I let Asia and London set up for my, you know, I'm talking about the bigger trade potentials. Yes, there are swings back and forth, 10, 20 pips. But I'm talking about the explosive fast moves. High and low of the week, high and low of the day. Coiled markets. Let the market set up a box and then let the market set the trade up for you. Don't try to chase all the moves. Get caught in, up and chop. Scalping pips uh, is good, but... When you get the opportunity for a cold market to make an explosive move, that's where traders have the potential to target asymmetrical risk reward and scale those trades up in size. Have a great trading session and may the markets Hi, go traders, with you. It's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburktrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7-Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets, and this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined, and may the markets go with you.